<coughs> the New Deal Democratic Party died a generation ago when I was in second grade. And LBJ traded in the war on poverty for the, for the crucifixion of Southeast Asia. Uh, they've been over as anything remotely like a seriously progressive social democratic force since the 1960s. They're hopelessly captive to what Ed Herman and David Peterson called the unelected dictatorship of money, which, quote, vets the nominees of the Republican and Democratic parties in advance, reducing the options available to, to U.S. citizens to two business parties, neither of whom can or wishes to change the foreign or domestic priority of the imperial U.S. regime. Look at the health care fiasco for just one of many examples. Single payer, which Obama claimed to support as an Illinois state senator, I was there uh, at the Conrad Hilton down in Chicago in 04. No, 03. Single payer, supported by American majorities for decades, was thrown under the bus from the get go. Even John Conyers couldn't at first get an invite to the original initial health care center in, January, in, in March of 09. Corporate order with the Stanford, Obama and the Democrats complied. Next to be shredded was the very popular notion of a robust public option, improved Medicare for all. Who wanted it, regardless of whether they already had health insurance or not? The unelected dictatorship said no, Obama and the Democrats complied. Next to the killing floor came the weak public action for those without other insurance and then yet weaker and weaker and weaker versions limited to certain states and they could opt out if they wanted to and perhaps to be enacted through some future mysterious trigger. I love that, which no one understood what the hell that was. <laughs> Even this was too radical for the big money bank role and was discovered. We have, remember this? I, I got momentarily excited about this. We had the short-lived notion, I mean, I'm getting old enough that this will matter to me, of a Medicare buy-in for 55 to 64 year olds. Unacceptable to the power only, John. What's left is this pathetic gift to big capital, a sick, and I'll, I'll go Michael Moore and call it sicko, corporatist joke, well to the right of what most, what most, most technically irrelevant American citizens want. American citizens, as Chomsky says, in theory are identical with governments in a democratic society. The last I looked, and I, I've got to be honest with people, after I sent my manuscript for Empire's New Clothes off, I, I shut down. I'll get back, but I shut down. So I mean, I mean like three weeks ago, the last I looked, I, I had to stop reading the newspapers. Mm -hmm. I'll catch up. The last I looked, the White House was talking about dealing away even the ban on denying care to people with pre-existing conditions, okay. except in the case of children. And this is my friend Kathleen, who's, old, who's older than Jan and I, who's 60-something, who's an old SDS fan guy, and just insisted on being for Obama. You know? I mean, she, she fought struggles against the Vietnam War and the civil rights movement. She's insisted and still kind of does. And this was the main thing she said, we said, pre existing condition thing, Paul. God damn it, Paul. Even that's going to be gone. Maybe. <laughs> it's like a strict tea. It's, it's this hideous burlesque. <laughs> and the dominant corporate state, I never say mainstream media, by the way. They, they didn't call Soviet state television and Pravda in his best year Russian mainstream media. <laughs> and I don't call the New York Times or Wall Street Journal and NBC, ABC mainstream media. The dominant corporate media's headlines tell us that the population is opposed to Obama and the Democrats' health reform. The polling data show this to be true, of course, but what the quote unquote mainstream ma media fails to add is that we reject it as a complete sell out to corporate interests. Now the whole line of the media is Obama tried to do too much. He went too far <coughs> left with his ambitious national health plan. And he went so far left and he lost the support of those center-right American people who are so conservative. This is total upside down, two plus two equals five, war is peace, Orwellian nonsense of the highest order. The truth is precisely the opposite. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is true across the board on numerous issues. How pathetically corporatist can the Democrats get? According to an anonymous Democratic U.S. staffer of a leading senator who wrote to Talking Points memo blogger Josh Marshall after Scott Brown's victory in Massachusetts, many Democrats, this is, this is called inside information, many top Democrats on Capitol Hill were pleased by the Scott Brown election to no longer possess a filibuster-proof yeah. Senate majority because losing the Kennedy seat gives them an out for not getting anything progressive <laughs> done. The main emotion people in the Democratic caucus are feeling, this anonymous staffer oh. said, is relief. Oh, God. Now they have a ready excuse for not getting anything done. Then the guy says this. There was a long memo. I put up. This is my life, the Senate staffer wrote. And I simply can't answer the fundamental question. What do Democrats stand for? Voters don't know, and we can't make the case. So they're reacting exactly as you expect. So we just swing back to the right. What about the uh, nation's liberal and progressive organizations beneath and beyond the establishment of Democrats? Where have they been to capture and channel legitimate populist outrage, missing in, in action, at once bedazzled and disciplined by his hopiness for Donald Obama? <laughs> whose enforcer, Ron Emanuel, has a threatened holy retaliation against the more activists who dare, and then want to, to, to dare to challenge the corporate and militaristic direction of policy. As the Marxist political commentator and a social, socialist worker guy, an ISO guy, Lance Selva, who is very sharp, notes, the liberal groups who could be kicking up a ruckus for genuine health reform or a real jobs program are playing the role of loyal soldiers to the White House's agenda. The groups in question, he mentions Democracy Alliance and a think tank called Center for American Progress, represent a liberal infrastructure that Selva says have, in exchange for regular meetings with White House officials, neutered themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's left the field open to the conservatives. To the conservatives. Is it any wonder, uh, self says, that most of the oppositions to Obama's program is coming from the right, which of course is completely shifted into full battle mode, as you know. And I don't know if any of you noticed as, as I did, just they, they didn't miss a, a, a beat. But unlike the Democrats, the Republicans, the, the, the right is very good they're being out of power in fighting trench warfare and keeping the heat on beneath and beyond these uh, quadrennial electoral extravaganzas. A lot of us on the left get more sucked into than they do, to be honest with you. We get, we get actually more into elections than the right does. So we've got this dangerous, maddening situation with much of what passes for a left muted. You know, and I, this emerged on Facebook recently. I was talking about how, you know, when, when you're a leftist like I am and you think you're academia and nonprofit institutions, your authority figures are always these kind of know it all Democrats. You certainly actually end up hating Democrats more than you hate the public. Because you're always under Democrats. That's what you think your bosses always are in unions, nonprofits, and anti department chairs and anti union. But I actually have a lot of contact with them. It's very important not to forget. I always tell leftists this how bad Republicans are. Don't get me wrong. I never forget that for a second. Uh, so, <laughs> if what passes for a left muted, it is hypercratic, the dangerous, messianic militarist, hyperplutocratic, dodgy, proto fascistic, Republican right wing and its still powerful noise machine is left to soak up much of the legitimate rage that ordinary Americans feel over Washington's continuing captivity and concentrated wealth corporate direction and the military industrial complex in the age of Obama. You know, resentment abhors a vacuum. And it's dangerous. And it reminds me of, the, of Weimar Germany, mm -hmm. where people are pissed off, they know they're being shafted, and they want answers, and nobody on the left, not on the official left, is giving them to them. It's like Chomsky said recently, shouldn't make fun of all these two guys. They're pissed off. They're mm -hmm. legitimately pissed off. They're confused. Mm -hmm. Democrats are going to get up and say, yeah, you know, you're being shafted by these same exact policies that we advanced under Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton. And blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do that. Tune in to listen to Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh. They're insane. But they're A, pissed, and B, forthright. They do have a consistent worldview. It's nuts, but it's internally consistent. And they defend it. And it does offer answers. Crazy answers, like Chastity says. Yeah, Nazi answers. No, no. Hitler gave answers. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you, full-blown Nazism actually put a lot of people to work, too. Mm -hmm. 